Welcome to the Real Talk Weekly Podcast, where we discuss news, culture, life, and dive into deep conversations about our faith. Here's your host, Alan Reed. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Real Talk Podcast 2023. It's a new year, a We're clean back. slate. We're here. A blank canvas with unfettered possibilities. Unfettered? Whoa. Ew. That's the word, the word of the day. Word of the day, toilet paper. You've had a little bit too much off time. You've got a lot of energy <laughs> growing on over there. I've had reading. A, a whole lot of off time. Uh, Allie, David, and James, it's good to see you guys again. You guys doing well? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, how's 2023 shaping up for you guys? What do you have planned? Any any big trips or big goals? Little well, goals? it's January 12th, Alan, so I'm not really sure how my 2023 is starting to shape up. You've had 12 days. You're planning. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is it? Lo- yeah, what is it looking like? I I didn't have any New Year's resolutions, um, besides just be a better person and gain a lot of weight. Um, nice, but. Uh, I am going. One to of those s- is achievable. Yeah, it really is. Uh, one one thing I am doing this year, though, that I'm very excited about. I'm going to see Shania Twain in concert. Nice. Yes, you. Let's go. What girls? happened to you? What I became a you? better person. That's what happens. Hey, she's a Canadian jewel. No, yeah. it's okay. I'm not. I'm sorry. Don't. I just. This is. You're in. You're in the country now. Yeah. Yep. He's and a for the entire boy. time I've known you, like you haven't really been into country. I saw the light. I've been baptized. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he travels oh, way goodness. down yonder. Yeah. yeah. He's broadening his horizons. <laughs> I'm gonna, um, yep. mm. My goal is to read the Bible in three years. Oh. I don't like the one-year plans. It's a lot of work. It's it is. cramming too much. It's, you know, You're so, not learning. You're just... Yeah. So I, go, it, I came across a three-year plan. I'm like, all right. It's a little is bit there a doable. reading plan that allows you to read the whole Bible except for all the so and so begat so and so and so and so begat? So, no. and so. But then you can't say you read the Bible. And then, right. but yeah. here's the thing: so I Andrew and I have much. read it multiple times because we try to read through the Bible thing that we do, and we get to April, <laughs> and we're like, we're done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like we try to do it together, and you know, every night it's like, okay, we're doing this, and then there's like one night a week we miss it, and then we go back, but we always get to like April or May, and then we're just our brains are cooked from all the. Yeah. My goal is just to read the entire Bible, yeah. and if I have gaps, then I'll just, yeah, no big deal. Just leave them. So three years. I've got three years to do it. You can do it. So Love yep. that journey for you. Yep. I'm just trying to move my body more this year. Mm-hmm. Um, being married to a personal trainer, <laughs> people ask me all the time, oh, do you work out with him? No, I don't. <laughs> Um, so Living that sedimentary lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody has to in our home. It um, rocks. Me and the puppy. So I'm trying to move my body more in this year. And I've done really well so far. I think I've only had two days off. Nice. So feeling so pretty good. So what kind of exercises are you doing? Not anything that Michael puts together for me. Okay, so good. <laughs> um, I like Pilates. So I've been mm. doing a lot of Pilates Pilates. lately. And also just yoga because I am a I very tense person naturally. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. trying to calm down. It's a, it's a good goal for I don't year. want to chase the rabbit too much, but what's the difference between yoga and Pilates? Pilates is more like cardio burning, mm-hmm. yep. and yoga is more like stretching, relaxing. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, did, I, sh- I thought they were the same thing. I was like, it's yin and so yang. You, do you have anything yeah. for 2023? Or it's only 12 yin days in, I know. But. I, I don't have motivations. All right. Okay. I don't That's have good. aspirations. Are you doing His anything cool this year? His goal is to have an aspiration this year. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, like, kind of. I'd love to be some, a part of one. Some someday. cool stuff. <laughs> Um, but it's, it would be self promoting if I talked about it. So I'm not going to talk about it. Okay. There you go. All right. Very good. Well, if you guys are new to the show, our format is very simple. We throw out three dishes. Many times they are silly, strange, idiotic, Stupid. pointless, oh. <laughs> but, uh, it's sometimes good, sometimes good. Right. And, uh, and so that's what, uh, the team here has put together three dishes for today. And then, really um, set us up well. yeah, we sound intellectual. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then, uh, I'll bring up the deep dish. I don't always come with a deep dish, but I will introduce the deep dish and it's designed to make us think a bit <laughs> and think a bit <laughs> to delve into much. things a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit. So, uh, every time we do the podcast, I get hungry because we talk about all the dishes and deep dishes and it's I'm like, like pizza time. Let's go. Yes. But before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe and share. And comment. You yes. point at everyone, but you say it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the point. Yeah. I do. Share. To, we like, kind of work out a better system on this. We're all supposed to have a part of this. Sharing is caring, mm-hmm. so yes. we want you to do it. So yes. on the count of three, please hit subscribe, okay? One, 
two, three. three. Just su- subscribe, subscribe, please. please. Sub- do it. Thank you. All right. It's time for the dish. Who wants to go first? So, I'll go first. All right. Oh, wow, that was fast. <clears throat> um, okay, so if you think you're having a bad day, um, <laughs> uh, there is a town in my home state of Wisconsin that is Woo! having a, a terrible day. Cheese crisis? Yeah, you would think, hmm. uh, but it does Similar. have to do with dairy. Hmm. Um, so our, uh, the article title says Wisconsin historic canal filled with butter after dairy plant catches fire. Um, so wow. obviously this is, happened? this is bad I don't news. Know. So they, this factory obviously is doing dairy stuff, um, has a room full of butter and this said room somehow caught fire. This article still doesn't know how it started, but it did and melted all the butter in the room. And so as the fire department gets there, they are trying to wade through like shin deep of butter to get to the room wow. that the uh, the fire started from. But this is not the worst part of the the story hinted from the title. Yeah. Um, all of this butter en- emptied into the Portage Canal. So Portage, <laughs> Wisconsin is mm. all this butter is now going into wow. um, this little river canal thing. Uh, which begs the question, when you fish and you get said fish, all you have to do is throw it on the grill. You're ready no. to go. Butter. It's already buttered. It's already nice. buttered and ready to go. That's yes. exactly why you wanted to tell the story was so you could do that joke. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then if if you're in Portage, Wisconsin, who needs, you just go to ladle your butter out of That's the disgusting. river. That's really disgusting. And does butter, butter float on water or does it Congeal? sink? Congeal? I'm sure it congealed a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's cold out. So well, think about what happens when you put it's butter re-turning. in a pan and then you let it sit there after you're done cooking and it like. Wait, what did you just tell turns me? Turns to a film. Put butter in my hand after I Put butter I've in your pan, pan. Oh. when you're cooking and then after you take it off the heat, it just kind of like thickens up. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. What I'm curious about is the firefighters wading through the butter. I mean, yeah. like butter warms up and turns into a I know, liquid pretty hot. fast. You know, so like. Melty butter. You know. The, could they also not have thought about maybe solving the problem by just throwing a bunch of popcorn in it? Nah, that would, would cause a nice. totally different problem. Mm-hmm. But then the whole town would smell like popcorn, and which the is a benefit. Is and a, you know. There's no problem there. <laughs> There's no problem there. And then no they could bring in a helicopter there. with like some cheese dust and just <laughs> oh cheese dust gosh. the canal. Oh, man. It's like cloudy with a chance of meatballs. It really is. Realize. They this really miss their opportunity I love butter. here. <laughs> I love butter. Mm-hmm. I do too. It's a good story. Good. So yeah. I've, I've got to start paying attention to Alan more because you guys know about the animated video that came out of us. And there's like the stuff that Alan says in the background that I'm like, I've never even heard him <laughs> no say No one it. ever pays attention. And that was one of those that he just is yes. like, mm, Caitlin, I like thank butter. You. She, <laughs> she heard me. I felt heard. Yep. You were seen and heard. Yes. Well, that is the story of the butter in the canal. Nice. I liked love it. it. Very nice story. You know how you see something happen and you're like, what's going on over there? And then you just wonder, could you imagine what the residents of this town thought whenever they finally figured out? I mean, Wisconsin sees a lot of dairy, so they're like, oh, it's happening again. Uh, or, yeah. You know. <laughs> not again. Yeah. 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 Dairy's not good sometimes. Hey, For I'll me. go next. Okay. Okay. For Allie specifically, dairy's not good. It's not. <laughs> this one's a good one. I felt convicted reading this one. I know my role on this show is mm-hmm. to keep the people young. All yeah. right. So here we go. These words have been decided upon... By who? By the prestigious Lake Superior State University (laughs) in Nowhere, Michigan. And these words are no longer acceptable to use in the new year. Banished. Erased. Mm. Um, They still exist, but you're just not supposed to use them. Is this like the, like... Slim jeans and crying emoji that Gen Zs hate. Yeah, and the middle part situation. I yeah, think it yeah. all falls together, but okay. I do agree with some of these words. Here, the 10. We're not listening to these anymore. Goat, greatest of all time. Which, to be fair, never really worked because they didn't Isn't use that, the periods in between. Yeah, I was gonna it say, is an acronym. Mm, it's an acronym. It's almost and also, to be a sports fan and not use Ford that. Yeah. has goat mode in their vehicles now, which what? is go over all trains. Hmm. Never oh, heard of it. That one is still acceptable to use, I yeah. guess. In this context, goat. What if you're talking about like a goat? No, yeah, this is specifically the all caps. Towards the goat. Okay. greatest of yeah. all time. Yeah. Okay. Inflection point. Didn't know that that was. What the heck is that? Yeah. You don't watch the news, so that's. I don't. No, okay. But sense. is that a hot button t- term? Like, What does it no. mean, Alan? At inflection point Tell is us, like. Dad. It's like a turning point. It's like 
in a war, something happens, turning and it's point. like it changed the dr- the trajectory. So it's a turning of the war. point, but it's just a fancier word. It's to a say. yeah. It's a. It makes you sound smarter when you use inflection points. Oh, as, okay. As opposed to turning point. Okay. Turning point felt good to me. I don't yep. know. All right, quiet quitting. Oh, we have a whole podcast. Mm-hmm. But a podcast that is, that that's, that's fresh. So 2022. Yeah, we're done with that. Yep. It's over. Gaslighting. Mm, yeah. Once again, the chicks. They've got a song about gaslighting. Can't sing it anymore. <laughs> Moving forward. Moving forward. We can't move forward anymore. We're that's not. Just such <laughs> an we're stuck. Stuck. Going backwards. <laughs> Stagnant. Yeah. Moving sideways. All right, amazing. I do agree. Get it out of here. Amazing. Find another word. It's so easy. Does that make sense? I use that word. Does that make sense? We're not saying that this year. So can we pause on that one for a minute? Because I find myself saying that a lot. And then sometimes I look at, because you know how I'm one of those people that I'll send a message and I'll read it again. Does that make sense? And I'll be like, what? She Did said, I just say it? That's amazing. He didn't realize. And she said, does that make sense? And then literally it's the next one on there. Sorry. We're I'm just catching up. I'm slow. It, yeah. Oh, I was actually talking about number seven. Does that oh, make sense? Oh, I what thought you were talking it? about amazing. No, 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 no. I'm talking okay. about <laughs> amazing such a dull word. Um, <clears throat> so. Super califragilisticexpialidocious. Okay. I can't. Yeah, say don't it. hurt yourself. Um, so I'll put stuff in an email, right? I'm trying to explain to someone, and then I'll say, "Does that make sense?" And then it's like, my reason for putting that in there is simply to say, "Did I explain it well enough, or mm-hmm. did I not that you're an you? idiot?" Right. But then sometimes I reread thought. the message I've sent, and I'm like, "Oh, that almost sounds like I'm being condescending." Like, mm-hmm. "Does that make sense, yeah. Allie?" Oh, I don't think so. You know, so. and so I'm wondering if that's why, that because way. people, because, <laughs> but it's not my intention. Right. It's always, I know that I maybe don't explain this well enough. So I just want to make sure that what I've said to you makes sense, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, cause I may be leaving important details mm-hmm. out that I just am not realizing I'm doing. But do you think that's why it's on the list is because some people use it in a condescending way? No, I think it's on the list because there's a movement to not backtrack what you're saying. And I've read mm. this a lot from younger generation articles of like, you don't have to like, you have explained yourself and that's enough. Mm. You don't have to ask whether or not it you need to hear it again. Stand yeah. strong. Yeah, that like, like a stick with your convictions. I don't no, know. I don't think it's a lack of communication. I just think it's like, I know I'm right, mm. and I don't like that either. Mm. Irregardless, well, it, it there's another <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. I like how she segues into the next one by using the next term. Mm-hmm. Irregardless. Okay. I'm guilty of nine. Listen, people say it's not a word. It technically is a word, but yeah. regardless. You don't need to be using it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't. That one's too hard. Absolutely. I am so guilty of that. I say it all the time. All I do the too. time. Like, absolutely. I say it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. People you know? will be like, hey, can you help me with something? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe we say like, for sure. Or do you want to join for an sure. alliance? For say, sure. Absolutely, like, <laughs> I do. <laughs> yes. yeah. For sure is like 90s. And what's wrong with the 90s? Nothing's wrong with Nothing. the 90s. If you look around, everybody's dressing like it. All yeah. right. Last one. It is what it is. I say that way too much. Mm. Yeah. But I think that's just because that's my personality. Maybe we say, so be it. It is so. Oh, I like it. <laughs> it is so. <laughs> it is so. It is so. It is what it is, is like a defeatist phrase. It, yeah. You know, there's a lot of things. <laughs> it is. There's a, <laughs> no, it there's is a lot of things Absolutely. that you're like, you know what? I know that this isn't necessarily the right way or the best way or a good thing, but it is what it is. I mean, it's just kind of a defeatist thing. So I think we use it because it's like, what else are we going to say? I don't know. I'm just going to go like yeah. this. I only have I'm one sure. that I struggle with on here. Which one know. is it? Uh, absolutely. That's the one. And mm-hmm. I say it a lot every day, mul- multiple times a day. We'll call you out. Because it sounds you know. confident and it sounds like, yes, it's a, it's definite. a definitive absolutely. yes. For sure. Yeah. You got it, dude. Right. Well, maybe not like that, but. There should be a list of words that people say that they say wrong all the time. Like people that say percolator or et cetera mm-hmm. or. Uh, hey. Air out your grievances with Alan in private. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go to the next <laughs> one. Let's go to James. Okay. So this one I picked because it's kind of funny to me. And as a dog owner, I can tell you that it, the, over the weekend, my wife took a picture of, we have a little bin by underneath one of our windows. It's like shaped like a dog bone and it's full of dog toys. Well, Charlie likes to get them all out. And he'll like root through it and he'll sometimes get in the bin and like try to find the toy he wants. Do you tell me it's put away one toy to get out of the Put your another toys one? away, you know? Charles. We've been trying to teach him to put his <laughs> toys away. It hasn't worked yet. Uh. But we'll go over to where that little area is beside the couch and there's toys everywhere because he's dug them all out of the, of the bin. And so, as a dog owner, I can completely understand where this might happen because we also have toys that look like things. 
So a woman in Australia got quite a wild surprise after mixing up her dog's faux Tasmanian devil plush toy with an actual real live Tasmanian devil. <laughs> Woof. Oh, so man, she went her home right? and That's so awesome. she went oh, to pick Australia? up the toy. Sorry, I said it. <laughs> what did you say? Awesome's allowed to be. Oh, is it? Awesome. No, that's not one. No, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Amazing. This is such an amazing story. It's absolutely like the funniest thing. But it is regardless. Funny. Um, so <laughs> she leans over to pick up the toy and <laughs> the toy scurries under the couch. Aww. And she starts screaming. <laughs> She's like, ah. Okay, when you prepped this this article, I was like, okay, how do you mix that up? But then I realized it's from Australia, and it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Poor little devil. Did you think someone in, like, Ohio thought, Yeah, I was oh. like, why in the world would they get... To me, that looks like a rat. I thought a Tasmanian devil, like, bleep, 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 and spins around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, my yeah. gosh. It you looks like, like too many bleep, cartoons. bleep, bleep, bleep. Right. Isn't that what he does? That is what he does. There you go. Yeah, yes. um, you're better at making this. Tasmanian those. devils are actually not even rodents; they're marsupials. If you didn't know that, mm. um, but yeah, she she pocket? reached over to pick it up, and it scraped <laughs> under the couch. It's lucky. Dude. And she started screaming, and then her family came in and was like, "What's going on?" And then they realized they had a live Tasmanian devil in their house. Do yeah, those only live in Australia? Yeah, Good. I think so. But you know what? Australia is like the land of all the creatures that want to kill you. Yeah, yep. I won't That's be going there. As much of a fun place as I think it would be to live, I would never want to live there because of everything there wants to kill you. I kind of don't even want to visit, you yeah. know? Kangaroos, though, would be cool. <gasps> they are but so they are cute. Dangerous. But they will, the face. Yeah, they kick you. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Joey. Yeah, Joey. Saw, there was a video of someone boxing a kangaroo. It's pretty cool. You can beat a kangaroo. You just have to. That's the last thing I've really been trying doing. to do. Hmm. Fight a kangaroo. All right. Very good. All right. We went through this fast. We did. We had a new goal this year. We do have a new goal. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of goals. They basically just want me to shut up. <laughs> we didn't say that. The we goals are that. actually for James. <laughs> if we can just keep James. He didn't have any goals. We're giving him <laughs> That's goals. Right. Yeah. We gave That's goals. right. We didn't have we goals. Did. We You're welcome. This. It's the deep dish. This deep dish uh, I is, I think, a good one to start the year. It's a good feel-good story. He sent it to you in the email. That's, you know, and so, I'm looking at the email. I did. No, yeah. they're the, the PDF. Is Pull up my email. You'll get the article. Uh, it's a New York Times article that came out on January 7th, about five days ago. Uh, I think most everybody knows, even if you don't watch Sparts. Of, uh, Sparts. Sparts. <laughs> Sparts. <laughs> Sparts. <laughs> yes. Sparts. Awesome. Uh, we'll edit that. I'm sure. Amazing. It'll, it'll edit that. So, so Damar Moving Hamlin. Forward. Most of us know who Damar Hamlin is by now, <laughs> even if you don't watch football. Um, he was the one that uh, was hit in the chest. And uh, after like a couple seconds, he just falls over. Everyone's like freaking out what's going on. And so this article was really about the response, the huge response that we got of prayer. Um, and it was just awesome to see immediately. I mean, people praying. If you guys just were, were you guys watching, by the way, did you were you mm -hmm. watching the game when it happened or no. how did you hear about it? I yeah. actually wasn't. We were watching it. Okay. I, heard, I didn't Mike. see it. Yeah. Because when Michael's I say I'm watching, I'm just on the couch and mm -hmm. it's on the TV and I'm doing something else. Mm -hmm. But um, she's knitting. Michael, her. yeah, knitting. LOL. <laughs> Michael noticed, and um, so that, anyways, we were watching it real time mm -hmm. as yeah. it was happening. Yeah. Yeah, and I got sent it from <laughs> you Mike. Were yeah. Yes, Michael texted you. Yeah, yeah. he texted me. Did you hear? About I it? still don't know anything about. It. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no well, one. No can't. one contacted you. Nobody. Okay. Wow. We're not a big sports ball. Yeah. He well, calls it you don't have to be to, to really <laughs> enjoy this article. Sparts. So DeMar, he, calls it he, he, he falls over and he's having, what was it? He had a, it wasn't a heart attack, but it a was. Cardiac arrest. Yeah. yeah. Cardiac There's arrest. a scientific name for it. But heart attack. Yep. Start to the M. I and I think what was so gripping is you just see a lot of those guys who are out there and they are, I mean, they're freaking at the moment. Big they're men, stressed out. They're literally crying. Literally sobbing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and within probably minutes, you start seeing guys gathering together to pray. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you watch a lot of football, it's not unusual. Before the game, you'll see players from both sides will get together to pray. Uh, if you've grown up in sports, you've been uh, probably have heard of or been a part of um, a different different Christian groups that are uh, part of the sporting programs and everything else. But this article I thought was really good. Let me just read the opening paragraph. Uh, this is by the New York Times five days ago on January the 7th. Basically, uh, the title of it says, Prayers for Damar Hamlin should bond, uh, should bond us uh, between our show. I'm sorry. There we go. I can't read. Show a bond between football and faith. And she said, as the ambulance carrying the injured football, uh, Buffalo Bills player Damar Hamlin rolled slowly off the field in Cincinnati Monday night. A huddle of pr uh, players and team 
Uh, staff knelt in massive yet ultimate circle on the field. They bowed their heads, some placing hands on each other's shoulders and others with tears streaming down their faces. In a moment of spontaneous prayer led by the team's chaplain, Len Vanden Bros, I guess that's how you say it, B-R-O-S. Not bros, but bows. Bows. Oh, yeah, bows. Mm. Thank mm. you. Uh, the hush crowd uh, at Pec- Pecor Stadium burst into applause as the prayer, uh, the players knelt and again rose after praying. It was the first of many prayers in an extraordinary display of public piety uh, that unfurled across the country in the hours and days afterwards. Uh, so just... It was just a powerful moment. I know that the very next morning I was like, I turned on ESPN. I was like, oh, they're going to be talking about this. I wonder how he's doing. And if you watch ESPN, uh, Dan Orlowski, he he's one of the commentators on the show. Um, I, I turned it on, and within minutes, he um, just said, you know what? I don't know if I don't know how my bosses are going to feel about this, but I'm just going to open us in a time of prayer. Mm-hmm. And he literally just prayed uh, and prayed in the name of Jesus and uh, prayed over Damar. And it was just really beautiful. And it got me thinking, wow, you know, it's moments like these that are beautiful and just remind us what we have in common. It brings a lot of unity. Uh, there are moments like that in history. You guys were young, but you probably remember 9-11 and how unified we felt mm-hmm. uh, as a country. And this was another moment where at least I felt that way. And uh, so, but it, it just got me thinking, you know, one, why does it take circumstances like this? What was uh, was scary in the moment? You know, now we know it's a pretty beautiful story. You know, God answered a lot of prayer. But why do you think it takes circumstances like this to bring people together? You know, well, I think it breaks us down into the, like the most intimate way. Like we are helpless to be able to help Damar in that moment. Mm-hmm. And we can't. We literally can't do anything to help him. Um, and so our natural inclination is to pray, um, or in most things, it's thoughts and prayers um, towards Damar. And hopefully, and I get, I'm speaking from a non Christian perspective here, that somehow he gets better. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think in the moments of just feeling helplessness, is, is the moments that bring us together because that is something that you can relate with someone really easily mm-hmm. with, especially if you're there in the moment, seeing that happen, how like tra- uh, traumatic that is. Yeah. Then you instantly connect with someone else and yeah. they, they know how you felt because they felt pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I was thinking of is, you know, I was reflecting on this. My dad and I, we like watching sports. We'll text each other during games. But over the past, like, year and a half, two years, my dad has not watched an NFL game. Uh, You know, previously, many of probably the same players, they made a different stand. Instead of praying, they were were kneeling for something else. And for some of the older generation or or for some people, they found that, you know, divisive. And some of them stopped watching uh, football. So for a period of time, my dad stopped watching the NFL games because of that. He saw that as disrespectful to the flag or dis- disrespectful to the nation. Uh, but yet recently we started watching these games together and he's been in the hospital for the last six weeks. He's been battling pneumonia. And so it's been a good reason for us to text back and forth and to be doing something together when I'm not there with him. And uh, so he immediately just said, are you watching what's happening uh, on the game because it was in the first quarter near the mm-hmm. beginning of the game. And I thought, you know, that's pretty cool. You know, a year ago, my dad wasn't watching uh, because he wasn't in agreement with what some of the players were doing. But here we have a crisis moment. And um, and it made me think about life. When we were missionaries overseas, we served with other denominations, different people. And when you... Um, are low on resources or when you feel like you might be alone or in a crisis moment, you tend to overlook what might divide us or what Mm -hmm. might our differences might be. And, um, and so, but we live in a season of comfort. I mean, we've lived in probably some of the best seasons of our nation, you know, the history of our nation and in the history of the world, our, our nation is probably the most powerful, richest nation in the history 
of mankind. And so I just feel like we're in a season where things are so comfortable Mm -hmm. that it just emphasizes what makes us different. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've gotten real negative, but it was just a great reminder of what we have in common. One, we're all going to die. To uh, someone as athletic and healthy uh, as DeMar uh, can fall to the same thing that any of us can. You know, we can fall over dead in a moment. And, uh, and you said it, you know, in those moments, all we have to turn to is God. And we mm-hmm. find even, even people who don't pray probably found themselves praying in that moment, and uh, which is just a, a whole other, you know, interesting topic in itself. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I think in moments of my life when uh, when I felt like uh, I was alone or when we were in moments where we had a huge task before us, it's easy to find unity with other people. And uh, it was refreshing. We may be very different. Our face may be different uh, or our, you know, we may have a different brand of Christianity, but we can all come together and pray and lift somebody up. And so... Was encouraging to see. I was going to say, and it kind of goes along with what you were saying, but, you know, I was thinking about September 11th and, and something like this, and, and there's been other things, but, you know, you pose the question, what does it say about us? Well, I mean, to me, it kind of says that, like you said, we're used to just being ourselves and being kind of selfish, right? Mm-hmm. And if things don't impact us, then we don't really care, you know? And, you know, we we saw these people gathering in the fields. I've seen the pictures, you know, and all that kind of stuff, and I've, I've heard enough about it, you know, that's like, okay, September 11th was kind of that way. All these people that jumped in and helped out, but where are they the rest of the time? Mm -hmm. You know, where's the prayers the rest of the time? Where's the jumping in and helping your fellow man the rest of the time? You know, and it's, it just kind of falters off. I mean, we went through a good season after September 11th where that spirit was about the United States and and all Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, but it's gone. I mean, it's completely gone now. So, you know, there are people, and I'm not trying to discredit or, or take anything away from, from DeMar's story at all. But it's like there are people that are suffering, there are people that are having these kinds of things happen constantly, and where's the crowd of people stopping as a nation, as an entire stadium, to pray for them, you know? And it's just not happening, you well, know? Well, to argue against that point is that it's... You literally had, what, 40, 50,000 people at that game mm-hmm. witness Watching, the same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't see that happen. Right. And so that's why I think this is such a drastic different scenario than what you're talking about yes there needs to be like this is where the church needs to stand in and do a lot of stuff for the 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 people that are suffering that Mm. aren't in the public scene um but i think the reason why it's such it's gotten such a big um response is because of that reason you had people in person seeing this happen but also the millions of people watching on tv that just happened like right. and don't know what happened and it just it was just a confusion and not know what was going on and if he was actually passed away they we just didn't know mm-hmm. um and so that kind of leads what you're saying all these questions that people and uh you feel like the the weight of I'm going to die at some point I'm going to I could suffer just as much as Demar is right now just mm-hmm. in a moment yep. and life is just fleeting um and I think a lot of people had that feeling at that moment Mm -hmm. during that time it's a good reminder too that beautiful things and good things can come out of seasons of crisis and in Mm -hmm. hardship i I think human nature is we pray for comfort we pray for good things and as humans we uh, gravitate towards that we want to be comfortable we want things to go easy sometimes we question god when things are hard but the reality is a lot of good things come out of hardship and pain Um, You know, as I alluded to, my dad's been in the hospital fighting for his life for six weeks. It has easily been the hardest season of my life, Mm -hmm. Uh, crying with my dad who never cried. My sister said the other day, I've only seen him cry one time in my life. And here we are weeping together, knowing that his life's coming to an end really soon. But there's been so much beauty in this moment. And uh, I wouldn't take away any of it uh, for some of the things that I've heard come out of his mouth that have just been encouraging, that have been powerful. And, um, and it made me think about the church. I mean, most of the New Testament, when Paul was writing letters, was to a divided people, mm-hmm. uh, to problems in the church. 
Uh, what united them was Christ and sometimes even the affliction that they were going through, being persecuted. So there were moments where they were united, but there were a lot of moments of division, and therefore he had to emphasize uh, being united. There were prayers. Jesus prayed for unity among the believers. And uh, so I just think it's our human nature. We're selfish. We gravitate towards comfort. We gravitate towards ease. But God allows difficult things for a reason because it takes our eyes off ourself and onto him, onto others. And a great example of that right there. So, But here's a question that um, comes to my mind. Uh, as we've been praying for my dad and we're not seeing the, the answers that we're wanting uh, in our church, we got to see literally a miracle uh, in Kevin Tibbs. You know, I, I just remember his wife posting about him and, and it was looking like for a day or so that he was going to die. It was just uh, going in for surgery, something not that big of a deal complication and uh, within i think a few days right he mm-hmm. he miraculously comes out of that and walks mm-hmm. out of the hospital mm-hmm. and, uh, and they came to our church and, and kind of shared uh, that experience and, and we all worship god and i wasn't angry about it i was like encouraged my dad was encouraged but i also knew in my heart my dad may not get that same answer mm-hmm. and and so and that's a good question because a lot of people may have been observing and even praying for Damar and having a loved one that has passed away or a loved one that is in the process of passing away. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what do you say? What do you say to somebody who's like, well, why God, it looks like God answered that prayer. Why didn't he answer my prayer? Or or did God really answer that prayer? Because it seems pretty random, you know, Mm -hmm. he he answers this prayer, but not this prayer. Well, it's that age old question of God exists. Why do bad things happen? Yeah. I mean, it, it just is. And, you know, <clears throat> when I was in my early 30s, my mom died in a car accident, right? And so what a traumatic thing to deal with when you're yeah. in your 30s. I mean, you, you know, you, you expect at some point in your life you're going to lose your parents. Mm-hmm. You don't expect it to happen when you're 30. Mm-hmm. And, and you can, it's just it's very traumatic. And it was a terrible season in my life. But, you know, in in the now 13 years later, whatever it is, it's – 14 years later, God has used that so many times over and over again in my life to help me help others. And it's whether they're believers or not believers, but it's kind of like God didn't save her from that accident. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I could just be angry at God. I could be like, whoa, how come this didn't happen? Other people, their families get in accidents and they live. It's like, no, there's no point in that. But God has used that. And I've been able to see the the tangible evidence of God using what happened in my life that terrible thing, right? That, Oh, if God loved me, this wouldn't happen, but he's used it for so much good. And and that's the thing is not everybody's story is the same Mm -hmm. and God's going to use the story. And that may sound completely unfair to us, but it's not about us. It's about God. It's about what he wants. And, and so, you know, cause it's about people's eternity. And so that's, that's kind of my answer is like, not every story ends the same. Not every story is the same. You know, sometimes things are going to happen, but there's a purpose, and as cliche as it sounds, there's a plan for it. There's a reason for it, and it's going to be fine. God's going to work it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think um, we live our lives as like they're our own, and that's just not the case. At the end of the day, we yeah. don't own our lives, yeah. and mm-hmm. um, it is painful. Like I, I have a good friend who um, lost her dad in a very similar way to um, Kevin and Natalie's story. Mm. And she did lose her dad. And yeah. so, um, her response was just, this is going to be very difficult for me yeah. to go through when hearing about, like you're saying other people's stories where this person pulled through and, and God ended up saving their life in that way. Um, but she, she knows that that pain is still there. And I think she knows that at some point it's always going to be there and it comes around at a certain time of season, but she reaches out to her believing friends and just asks for prayer and just asks for them to, you know, be gentle to her. If she is, is not who she always is just during that time. And so I think you can live with a scar maybe for your whole life, but the pain is gone. Um, and so I think we just have to remember truly our lives are, they're not our own. And so every day really is such a miracle and so special. And it, it is really difficult when, um, I mean, we've even had friends who have 
lost their babies and family members who have lost their babies, but, you know, throw a baby shower two weeks later for their friend. And so going through those situations yeah. is not easy and it, it's not fair. But again, that's that thing your mom and dad teach you when you're like three. Life's not fair, you mm-hmm. know, and, and it really isn't. But it's because yeah. we aren't in control of our lives and they're not ours to keep. Yeah. And I think even serving at a church like the size of First Baptist Rogers and seeing that it, when, when you are, are ministering or you're actively involved in church like this, you see these stories, conflicting stories too, and uh, miracles over here and what seems like a lack of response from God over here. You know, he didn't answer that prayer in the same way, that sort of thing. I remember having someone uh, ask me about the passage in Matthew 7, and I'll read it here in a second, but... Um, he was struggling with something in his life. He was praying for something in his life, um, almost like how Paul was praying for that thorn to be removed, and, and God didn't remove it, but he was praying for something really personal. And he said, Alan, I, God's clearly not answering this prayer, and I don't understand why. And uh, he showed me this verse, or these verses in Matthew 7, uh, and it's, and you guys will recognize that it. it says, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. To the one who knocks, the door will be open. Who among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? Uh, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? And so his question to me was, Alan, I'm asking sincerely. I'm humbling myself before the Lord. Why isn't uh, God answering this prayer? And uh, and those are hard. You know, those are hard to answer. And sometimes even uh, a good biblical answer isn't going to always be satisfactory for somebody. But the reality is, is that God does hear our prayers. He hears every one of our prayers. Um, but he doesn't always answer them the same way, just like a parent won't answer something the same way every time. He, he can answer, yes, yes, I will give you what you request. And sometimes it's no. And um, and that's hard. That's hard to hear, especially when it feels good. I remember my dad, when he was praying for his own father, who was crippled. His My grandfather um, had a stroke and was crippled on one side. I remember my dad saying when I was a kid, to me, he was just talking about it. He goes, even to this day, my dad's a a, a man of faith, says, even to this day, I don't understand why God allowed my dad to become crippled. He was such a good man. He was a... He was a deacon. He was a leader in his church. He was so active and did so many good things. Why would God do that? And and he was really sincere. He wasn't giving me any answers. He just threw it out there. He was somewhat angry and confused. But I I think as you live life, you, you just realize, just like a parent doesn't always say yes, God doesn't always say yes. He sees the big picture. Sometimes it's wait, and it's just not today. And we don't, we don't understand why, just like Paul, he prayed three times for that thorn, whatever. We don't know what that thorn was to be removed. Some people think it was blindness uh, or, or something like that, an ailment. Other people think that maybe it was a sin area in his life that he struggled with. We really don't know what it was. But he prayed about it, and, uh, and it wasn't removed. And, um, and so I think it's just one of those things where we have to trust in God's goodness that he understands, he knows the big picture. And, um, and there's, you know, wonderful examples of people that do just that, you know, that we need to look for in life. Yeah. And I find it interesting, um, going through Job right now through just a reading plan. Mm. Um, such a happy book. It's such a happy (laughs) book. Um, it's very relatable to the situation. Like you're saying with people that experience answer prayers and people that don't, um, in their, the way that they're asking. Um, it's an important way for us to, um, I mean, it's, it's how we respond to others that are in the situation as well. Uh, like you look at Job's friends. Um, I mean, theologically, a lot of the stuff they say are correct, but in that moment they were wrong and how they reacted and how they responded to Job's pain and, and, um, like, one thing you read was the fact that Job's friend said, you know, like your guilt deserves way le- more like yeah. the response to your, your guilt in his opinion 
Job was in the wrong, but yeah. uh, we know that God saw him as right, a right man. Um, but the the idea that you know you're blaming this situation on that person, yeah. which is not what us as Christians should do, like mm-hmm. ever, or a person like a, a decent person right. shouldn't blame this stuff happening on someone's sin or whatever. And I think it's a good opportunity for us to see um, all of this stuff is just to see God's grace through a lot of this. Yeah. Yes, we don't deserve what we get. We don't deserve the comfort that we have. We don't deserve the breath that we are breathing right now. Mm-hmm. And the fact that God gives us his grace and mercy, and it's just a reminder to us that, you know, even in our life is fleeting in that moment, his reminder that God has given us everything that we yeah. have. and. Yeah. And we don't deserve it, but God is gracious to give. And um, and just thinking about prayer, you know, like this not a, this is not an argument about like whose prayers are heard and whose are not. Um, it's just a moment that everybody who is praying gets to experience God's common grace, mm-hmm. like God's grace in that moment. And we pray and hope that they see that as God's grace, not just a oh, I did this in my own power of because I sent thoughts and vibes to whoever's in, in pain. Mm-hmm. Um, we just pray that people will see God's grace through all of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's a great word. I was just going to follow up on the conversation about Paul pay, praying for the thorn to be removed. God did answer him and just said, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm-hmm. And um, my power is made perfect in, perfect in your weakness. And so... Mm-hmm. Sometimes that is the answer and it's not the answer we want. But yeah. again, we write from a human perspective and we can only see a tiny, tiny sliver of the big picture. And so yeah. um, if we wrote our own stories, it would be terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so. For real. There's a song we sing uh, every once in a while that um, that has kind of hit me a few times uh, in moments of my life. And I don't remember the name of it, but it's where uh, it says he gives and takes away. He gives and takes away. My heart will truly say, uh, blessed be your name. Yeah, oh, blessed yeah. be the name of there the Lord. Go. Yeah, and, and, and it's really true. I mean, God does give and he takes away. Um, but if we truly trust in him, um, then we can trust in the fact that it is either for our good mm-hmm. or for the greater good or that God mm-hmm. has a purpose in it, even though he does maybe doesn't uh, cause all things to happen. I mean, sometimes we, our sin, uh, evil in this world, whatever it is, can cause bad things to happen. But God can take anything uh, evil, any evil act, and he can do something good out of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and sometimes it's a choice. It's mm-hmm. a choice for us. And that's not always easy to hear, but it's it's beautiful to see people react when they easily could react into anger and bitterness towards God or others, and they they respond in faith. And, um, mm-hmm. and I can think of so many examples in our church right now of where mm-hmm. that's happened. Um, and I always pray, Lord, help me to be uh, full of faith during moments of crisis. Uh, mm-hmm. um, you know, help me to honor you in those moments, you know. Not easy to do. And my dad said it the other day. He remembered a friend who was in the same position he's in right now. The guy was on his deathbed. And uh, he said, this is a guy that my dad worked with for years. And uh, he was telling me about this the other day that it stuck with him. He just says, I want my three sons to see me uh, die as a man and and die with faith. Hmm. And my dad, um, he illustrated that about a month ago when we thought he was about to die before he went on the ventilator. He called every one of his grandkids, talked to every one of his kids. And his last words before they wheeled him out was, uh, he pointed to my mom and says, that's my girl, Mm -hmm. and left. And it was just like the coolest, most manliest way to Mm -hmm. say goodbye. I was like so proud of my dad in the moment. And and we've had him for the next six weeks, but literally within the next week or so, we're going to be saying goodbye to him for real. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad was telling me about that. I'm like, Dad, you've already died like a man a few weeks ago mm-hmm. for all of us to see. And when God's time for you to go again, you'll have that same opportunity and, and yeah. I know you'll take it. And uh, so beautiful things can happen in moments that are difficult and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So embrace those moments, trust in God, 
ask God the tough questions. Uh, Ashley and I call them the rated R questions. Ask Ooh, God the like tough it. questions. He's more uh, than capable of responding mm -hmm. and uh, and hearing those questions that we have, even in those moments where we where we doubt or lack faith. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and uh, just a final thought is that. And the other article that you sent us was from the, I think Christian today or Christian, mm -hmm. I forget what yeah, Christian time or whatever. Yeah. Um, one of the sections was talking about, we can pray, but in the prayer comes action after the prayer. Mm -hmm. Like how are you going to follow through in faith that, you know, like when in James talking about faith without works is dead. Mm. I, I think that the, the saying could be prayer without works is dead. Yeah. You know, like how yeah. are you going to respond to that? And most of the time it's just steps of faith, yeah. not necessarily s specific, tangible things. Like we've seen a lot of things in DeMar's uh, story of like donating to his, his uh, charity and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But more or less is in our own personal situations than times of tr traumatic experiences, how are we going to walk in faith after mm -hmm. and not yeah. just, our, our traumatic experiences should lead us to more faith and yeah. not just the same faith that we had before. Yeah. yeah. Good, good stuff. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's show and uh, we want to encourage you. If you know somebody that has gone through a struggle, maybe this will be a, a great encouragement for them. So share that with them. And um, yeah, you know what? Uh, message us, let us know what you thought of today. And if you have any other topics you want us to cover this year, uh, let us know about that. We'd love to hear your ideas and uh, let us know about your own story and your own uh, lessons that you've learned through difficult times and how you've grown through that. All right, guys, thank you for today. And please continue to share our content and subscribe and um and join us in 2023 yep we got some cool things planned we hopefully excited. they pan out yeah. so yeah yep. we're, we're excited for 2023 god bless we'll see you next week bye bye, bye.